Um, so this is this is a a slightly different angle, really, on um, on some of the innovation um, into uh, new materials from new processes, and you'll see why as I go along. Because this this is more looking at some of the vision we've got and we've been trying to develop with uh, stakeholders through uh, throughout the iron and steel sector, really, to um, to address the challenges of uh, hydrogen direct iron reduction or electric hydrogen steel making uh, routes, which are being obviously touted as the the uh, part of the answer to decarbonizing um, iron and steel making and feature heavily in new announcements almost every week at the moment. So I'm not going to bother running down through all of those uh, because you have the internet, you you, know, you you keep track of where people are, are going with announcements and um, progress in, in all sorts of uh, pilots in, well, okay, Sweden and other parts of Europe uh, as the, the kind of headline features there. But uh, actually before, um, before I go on, thank you for the introduction. Um, I took over this responsibility from Colin Atkinson, who will be much better known to most of you. Um, so I'm just name checking him at the beginning, so I don't forget at the end. But um, just in case, now what I'm talking about um, for the next 10 minutes or so is actually part of a, uh, the, the vision has contributed to a bid we put into the um, the net zero innovation portfolio fuel switching competition uh, just this week so i'm just putting some disclosure out there in case anybody listening is part of the review panel i don't know what your um what your obligations are in terms of people influencing you or not influencing you or whatever um but hopefully if if that is you and um you, you might get a bit more of a, a grasp of some of the the potential of the vision by listening to what we're doing um the this is when it's not just about applying uh, for one particular competition this is actually a, a larger vision that we've been developing over the last year anyway about really how do we um how do we get through the logjam of really having no facilities uh, in the country to examine uh one of them the major technologies being being touted as a solution examine hydrogen iron making and hydrogen electric steel making uh beyond kind of lab scale really and how do we how do we actually get up to um looking at the realities of trying to make that into uh viable commercial processes and and what do we learn about the evolution of that as it goes along um but uh well what, what i'm outlining now is is really part of the the, the background to the, the phase one feasibility studies that we're hoping to carry out next year um, that will then bring us up into um, a larger pilot scale program the next year. And um, because we don't have one, because um, although there are various pilots around and many uh, respected colleagues on this call or, or within the network will be obviously working with or allied to or um, in close communication with with counterparts around uh, Europe in particular um, and, and North America looking at the uh, the evolution of hydrogen iron making hydrogen direct reduction of iron um, and so on uh, but then if we actually want to do anything at scale we, we, we can't do it here right now so we are constrained i think partly by the, the fragmentation of the industry um here and in some sense in many senses actually let's be honest playing catch up with uh, with some of the uh, the other companies and, and research kind of institutes around uh around the world and yet i think if we if we pool resources and work together on this we still have an opportunity to provide some quite um, valuable innovation and de-risk the uh, the whole process because this is essentially still quite a 
kind of mid to mid range to upper mid range uh, TRL set of processes that we're looking at here. So the vision uh, is to try and establish, as I say, a, a tons per day pilot scale um, HDRI uh, plant using hydrogen, predominantly hydrogen. I'll, I'll put some caveats on there because that, that's one of the questions open to, to do some R&D on. But integrate that with the existing um, arc furnace that we've actually got here, the pilot melting and, and, and casting plant that we've got here already at the Institute um, and a hydrogen network that's that's under uh, design and construction this year and characterization lab, labs that we that we have that other that other partners have as well. Um, and in order to get that going and make sure that we actually have the right level of buy-in and that this is this is scratching the itch for where the industry is at now, we've started um, to convene what I'm calling a H2 DRI, hydrogen DRI interest group to make sure that we actually have appropriate you know, stakeholder engagement at, at the right levels, you know, iron making technical, steel making technical, um, but also looking at how that involves the rest of the, the supply chain and the uh, and the academic stakeholders as well because if if just part of the sector starts trying to move without the awareness and knowledge of the rest we we may find ourselves um, missing opportunities that we could otherwise have taken through synergy so the what of this um really is to with a, with eyes on a phase two design and a phase two where we can make um, tons per day where, where by that I'm I'm talking you know likely a sort of one to four tons per day throughput kind of capacity uh, because that that matches up with um, we can we've got a seven ton uh, batch iron burn um, Arc furnace at the moment, so that's that's of the right scale that we can we can match up and 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 actually run a, a pilot production process. But to establish, um, confirm the phase two design that we actually want to build during the phase one project that, that will hopefully will come this year, this coming year. Um, and that that's looking. We've actually got a rotary design. I'll show you a picture of that in a moment. Um, rather than the, the classic static shaft design. I know everybody loves up and down um, shafts in iron and steel industry, but in fact, there is quite a lot of innovation space, I think, to be considering what's an appropriate, what, what could be the BAT for the future of iron reduction. So we wanted to put a bit of innovation in, in, and ask some questions around that as well as uh, just saying, let's let's get ourselves some some pilot kit that we can actually reduce um, bucketfuls of iron rather than uh, cupfuls of iron, and start doing some some experimentation on that um, to then get ourselves up to uh, decent sizes skip skipfuls of iron that we can we can melt and uh, and turn into steel. The um, the vision really is not just to demonstrate direct reduction of iron ores into iron is actually to get it to steel making because that is the point. Um, how does it actually transform this the whole ore to steel um, process line, not not just um, not just one step of it, because there is so much interaction there. Um, so what I'm planning to look at during phase one is to do some some um, studies on the design that we have already a piece of kit that we have already and confirm if that's the best design to scale up or whether we, we do actually go for a more um, sort of classical static uh, vertical furnace design. Um, also to examine the net energy benefit of using microwaves in addition to um, the radiant heating, which has been shown to enhance reaction kinetics uh, and in oxide transport in um, in reduction in, in other ceramics, but also in, in, uh, in iron ores. Um, and then to to run some some smallish demo campaigns that we can start to do some actual melts on, and look at not just the the metallurgy of the the resultant um, steel, but also look at what happens with the slags and the the, uh, 
the the on the, the, the knock-on effects on on seal making and processing and um, within that to look at what what do we actually what can we actually learn about the the, the energy requirements in terms of hydrogen and other input energy um and and how does that feed into an actual life cycle kind of co2 impact um but the important the important point being the final point um let's make some hdri iron and with pure hydrogen and with with other potential mixtures and melt and refine it into steel let's see what's actually um needed what bits of information do we need to de-risk the process to uh, start moving towards fuller larger scale trials and demonstrations and production and get things moving as quickly as we can towards lower carbon um, steel making this just as a, a slight aside this is this is a furnace that was actually designed and um, constructed as part of a the, the first round of the industrial fuel switching competition uh, two three years ago uh, with a combined piece of work by by CTEC innovation who um, based on on other microwave um, microwave interaction with oxides and reduction of oxides um, had a look at some ilmenite uh, reduction there and and showed the the reaction kinetic effect of uh, a, a fairly strong microwave field uh, adding energy in at um, adding energy in to the um, to the ores during a hydrogen a pure hydrogen reduction um, atmosphere and the fact that they could they could drop this is the exciting bit they could actually drop the uh, the reaction temperatures down to about 650 from about 850 900 which would be the, the normal operating range of a of a hydrogen um, reaction so potentially quite a lot of knock-on effects there and they they extrapolated roughly a 30 percent energy saving um, net energy saving from using a combination of radiant heat and microwaves in um, to to add the energy into the reaction this furnace on the right being the uh, the experimental rig that they put together with uh, with a hydrogen tight as tight as you can for hydrogen hydrogen tight uh, rotating cuff uh, microwave shielding uh, and so on in order to, to then look at scaling up um, the process and, and demonstrating on it you know you've got about a, a sort of four meter long uh, rotary shaft there that you uh, with microwave field and, and radiant heating zones in it um, so that uh, CTEC are one of the partners in uh, the proposal we put together and we've been working in, uh, with and talking to them uh, during this year about how to take on the work that they did and and take it up to the next stage for uh, some longest trial demonstrations of reducibility of various iron ores um, so i'll keep going because my time is short the why why do we need to do this there are um umpteen questions I won't read down the list for all of those, but I mean it's a it's a, a potted summary of some of the, the questions that uh, Sarah Hornby particularly and and um, Jeff Brooks raised in the in the paper that's been doing the rounds on uh, impacts of HDRI on uh, electric arc furnace steel making. Um, that has been you know I think it's going to be looked back at as one of the sort of seminal classic papers because it it just crystallizes so many of the, the questions um, about the economics, the viability, the yes, but is this actually going to work in this? And what happens if you stop using carbon as a redu uh, reducing agent? Um, so we know you can do it with hydrogen. Um, doing it safely with hydrogen at pilot scale is, is, is possible. It's not cheap. That's part of the, the issue as well. Um, we have finding that out as, as we scale up and uh, and get a hydrogen distribution uh, system kind of ready at the Institute for, for this, but for other hydrogen based uh, kind of projects as well. Um, you know, you've you got to look at, at heating and uh, preheating and reheating and, and so on, as well as uh, as well as reduction um, as you know, where's an appropriate use for hydrogen in, in steel making. Uh, but there's, there's a lot of questions around um, feedstock 
for these uh, for these processes. Uh, but then also actually, if you scale up from from a reduce uh, an IOR kind of reducibility rig up to a full scale process, actually, what happens at bulk? What what are the differences? And and this is where we actually want to be making doing a matrix of, of various um, ores, various um, reducing atmospheres as well, so that we can we can tickle in bits of um, levels of carbon to, to actually try and assess how do you how do you get the carbon in if you're not using it as, as the main reductant um, because obviously the dis you have to look at what's going to happen with the, the disruption to to steel making if there's a completely different um, HBI feedstock uh, which hasn't been been carburized in the the way that we're familiar with let's put it that way uh, and, and a set of questions there a set of questions around what happens if you're using hydrogen much more um, uh, much more permeable when using hydrogen to, to get through um, all the the microstructures uh, but what actually what actually does that potentially mean for low magnetite ores or harder to reduce ores or ores that are just lower in in fe content and what does that mean if you start to make, try and make steel with it where's where's the value and use point come and and change um if you've got more gang if you've got much larger slag volumes in future do you need to change the furnace designs what about foaming if you're not evolving quite so much carbon carbon monoxide as you've expected all this kind of stuff some of it you can predict some of it you've got to suck it and see and this is um this is <laughs> Kind of let's summarize it in a nutshell. There you go. Um, show me the carbon. What what about the carbon? Because how do you how do you make steel without carbon? I, I don't get it. I don't understand. You, you must. You, of course, you've got to keep using carbon to make steel. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> last minute. The um, what we're doing to innovate to make sure this actually gets uh, working as a pilot. R&D facility that we can all access for research, for uh, industrial examination of things, is to start out with a smallish, um, a smallish consortium to to do the feasibility studies, but really build on what we've started doing already to create an interest group and make sure that we have as many collaborators and people attending to the research um, as we go forward and develop a pilot. The vision is to have a pilot facility that we can actually access we can work together we have to do some innovation in the way that we approach the problem as well as some innovation in the actual science the engineering and the, the technical design uh, because we have to get carbon reductions as soon as possible um, in the in the 2020s and 30s not not in the 2050 otherwise it's all blah uh, i'll just leave you with picture of Henry Bessemer is, is upstairs if you make it upstairs so the, the top corridor here at the Institute is, is hanging on the wall um, basically talking about his approach that uh, you know there's a guy who was actually able to get things from idea to commercial reality um, all the way and um, hopefully we can follow in his footsteps and I'll just leave you with one more Sheffield icon at the very end as a reminder, and thank you very much for your attention.